Okay, hello everybody. Uh, so I'm making this video just as a follow up to um, the previous video I made uh, reviewing perplexity AI. Um, and I will somehow put the link here somewhere here in after I finish recording this, uh, if you wanted to watch that. And um, I'm making this addendum because I want to correct something that's very important. In that original video, I said that um, some of the results that Perplexity AI got um, were not that useful because they were kind of a general um, kind of uh, general references and not specific to the debate. I think the question that I asked originally, and here I'll share my screen. Uh, that I originally asked was uh, uh, one of the key questions I've been using, explain postmodernism, right? Something that's a, a very, very uh, plain question, easy to understand for the machine. Um, and uh, it gave back um, some kind of general uh, references, um, which I think still was useful because it's able to give references and citations, which ChatGPT is unable. However, um, somebody who had seen the video suggested that uh, maybe I could ask it to, to limit its searches to, say, uh, ranked uh, searches like in Google Scholar or in some other type of uh, database. So that, I did exactly that. So here, if you look here, um, I wrote in my um, revised search, tell me about postmodernism, but only access and refer to documents that have been indexed through Google Scholar. Please use highly ranked articles and only look at the domains of philosophy, political science, and comparative literature. So what I'm trying to do obviously is I understand in terms of my own knowledge, uh, the debate around postmodernism really within these fields of research. And um, I was hoping that it can then look in those areas and then I could judge whether or not it was useful or not, or whether the new results were better. And of course, they are better, right? In the sense that here, uh, the first paragraph is still very kind of basic, kind of boiler point, uh, boilerplate, um, kind of something that you would read from Wikipedia. But then right in the second uh, paragraph, it now refers to Martin Jay's article, Habermas and Postmodernism. Martin Jay is a well-known scholar of critical theory and uh, working on the Frankfurt School. Uh, and so that's very useful. And so unlike the first video that I made where perplexity was looking at these kind of general citations, now it's going actually to somebody who is very authoritative about the subject. Um, and then it also goes to this article, Paradigms of Postmodern Demo um, Democracies, it goes to an article by Stephen Best, who I do remember reading a book many years ago by him about postmodernism, uh, postmodernism and its critics. So that's also an excellent citation. Um, this one does those postmodernism really entail a disregard for the truth. I don't know that author, nor do I know Richard Ashley's article. And again, here they are cited here. Um, uh, the first source was Habermas and postmodernism. Um, The, uh, the other article was Postmodernism and its Critics by John McGowan, which I don't know. Uh, this, uh, um, and then this other um, article by, um, in Sage, sorry, here I'll just click on it. Uh, number two, that's the Martin Jay article, um, and so on and so forth. So I do think, uh, you know, in, in the sense of providing better citations, if you are able to tell it, and I forgot that <laughs> prompt engineering was so important, I for, if only you just said, look at things that are in Google Scholar that are highly ranked and within these fields, perplexity is able to deliver. So that's, I think, useful. But then I, um, I did ask a follow-up question, right? I said, can you provide more context and more cited sources explaining postmodernism? Again, only refer to highly ranked Google Scholar articles and books. So I, I think it was successful again. It now looks at, uh, it gives me um, an article uh, or, yeah, it's the article, The Condition of Postmodernity by David Harvey, who is also another famous uh, Marxist scholar. Um, it's a very well-known book. Um, the John McGowan article, uh, the Martin Jay article. So it kind of repeats a little bit here. It's the same uh, article, but Martin Jay. So I don't know if that, that that's interesting. 
it's kind of re um you know re-rolling the dice and creating a new if you will um a collage right of um of issues and then i wrote and which i didn't i asked it here uh, something i didn't ask in the original video which is can you write something that's a longer kind of synthetic summary right and i think i've asked that question um in chat doc and also in Humata in some other videos the uh, similar uh, if you will api interfaces to chat gpt um it wrote something um you know it's, i said please write using an academic voice it wrote one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven short paragraphs um i'm not going to read it all out loud um but you know i think the voice is good it is a scholarly voice um it 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 is kind of authoritative and very pedagogic and it tries to explain if you will postmodernism. um and it is also of course citing things it's citing things more as summaries so it's not really integrating if you will the citations into the argument as as much as it is if you will presenting here you can see it's almost as if it's presenting if you will a block summary right and there's a, there's um there's not much narration between these one two three four five books right there's no segues between these uh paragraphs so it's not really a a well thought out argument it's providing the citations and and if you will summaries uh almost as an appendix at the end of its um um at, at the end of its original kind of um four paragraph argument and then it it has a, a conclusion that says overall these sources provide different perspectives blah 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 so uh, i'm not so sure if it's that useful ultimately um i think it is useful in the sense that perplexity ai i'll, I'll unshare the screen now i do think that perplexity ai is um useful in the sense that um it's able to provide the scholarly citations so that's very useful that's something that chat gpt cannot do um, and if you limit, if you ask it to limit itself to a particular uh, topic or to pick a sort of area of research or to a database or to a search engine like Google Scholar, uh, then it does keep to those parameters. So that's very useful. And I can imagine that there's other databases that you might know of that you could or, or uh, fields of knowledge that you can limit the search to by um, by uh, by by providing those parameters. So that's very useful. Um, and I do think, although, you know, it, it is useful in providing these scholarly sources, do you as the reader really understand, this is the issue, right? Do you understand what is the debate? I'm not so sure if this kind of shake and bake kind of authoritative summarization of things does help you understand. Now, of course, I could have kept, uh, probing it and asking new prompts, like I would say a, a human tutor, like a human um, a kind of executive assistant, I could have kept saying, well, can you explain this? Or I don't under, under, I don't understand what Martin Jay says about that. So I think if you can engage in that, maybe it can be pedagogic, but I still think, um, I still think it's almost as if these are, let's say you can imagine them as, uh, as parts of PowerPoint slides that a professor instructor is uh, giving a lecture on with using these, if you will, um, these these uh, these paragraphs of text, imagine them as bullets, and then extemporizing and explaining that to a class that m should have read those articles. So that could be useful in the sense that if you had read those articles and then read, if you will, the more synthetic uh, interpretation and contextualization, uh, then maybe it can be useful but i think uh the very fact that it is doing all this heavy lifting for you and that you're not reading it uh in advance of it explaining what you've read or trying to help guide you in your reading um i don't know if it's that useful because ultimately i don't think you understand the debate yeah but i guess it could be useful if it's an if it's a tool that's adjacent to something that you're studying in a, in a classroom setting um and that might the classroom that you're in or the course that you're taking that might give you the historical or if you will the genealogical framing of the debate but this itself perplexity i itself i don't think 
uh, has the um, has the capability of doing that. Also, I think the summaries are okay, you know, but ultimately, I, I feel like it's providing a kind of false expertise to the student. It might be kind of fooling you into thinking you do understand something when in fact you you have actually not very much understanding of the larger theoretical or historical context of the debate. But ultimately, yes, it's better than ChatGPT. It does give you uh, citations um, and it's very useful because it can quickly show, you know, two, three, four or five uh, very interesting citations that are useful. Yeah, I don't know how useful it is outside. I'm looking only at in relationship to, uh, you know, arts and humanities. Um, I don't know how useful this is in the context of, say, scientific uh, research or or science use. Somebody else will have to to do that. That's you know, that's not my expertise. Um, so thank you for that. I just wanted to correct that. Perplexity AI is able to look up scholarly sources, and that can be very useful for um, people uh, using it uh, for academic purposes. Okay, thanks a lot.